even if I am breaking up with YouTube, I don't want to break up with you guys. Hello YouTube friends, it's Amanda on Eat, Pray, Crunch, and I am coming to you guys with some more serious news today. I wish my title was clickbait, but it's not. Yes, you read that correctly. I am at least for the foreseeable future for now, I'll never say never, but I am for now quitting YouTube. And honestly, just the fact that I am even saying that just makes me feel emotional and actual grief. If you have been paying any sort of attention to YouTube and the news recently, you will have seen that um, there has been a major shift going on legally with YouTube. Let me just give you a little bit of history about this, just to give a little background about how we have gotten to this point today. So this has to do with the Federal Trade Commission. And back in 1998, when the internet was really getting going, they passed a law called COPPA, C-O-P-P-A, which stands for, let me double check that, Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. And the point of that was basically to protect children on the internet, which is great, right? That's what we want. We want to protect children on the internet, um, particularly protecting their personal information and their data. In September, YouTube was fined like some hundred something million dollars for violating that basically. Without going into too much detail, because unless you are in the world of YouTube, probably a, not a lot of this stuff would make sense. I've been in it for five years now, so I have learned a lot of the background behind the scenes stuff, and I've done a lot of reading and watching videos from actual lawyers on this situation that's happening right now. So I'll try to explain it in layman's terms the best way possible. <laughs> Um, and bear with me, this is probably going to be a long video, but it's also my last video, so there's a lot I want to say. So with this lawsuit, YouTube has decided to make some pretty drastic changes that basically, in a nutshell, is destroying most small creators and their channels. I honestly feel like them doing this may be the beginning of the end of YouTube if it continues this way, just because of the insidiousness of what they are doing. The nitty gritty of what YouTube is doing with this new policy is you have to mark whether it is intended for children or not. And this is retroactive too. Like all the way back to every single video you have ever made. So you have to go back and mark this either for your entire channel for or for every individual video that you have made and every video going forward. Now, this ultimately comes down to advertising because the reason YouTube got in trouble was because they have stated all along, if you read in their fine print, YouTube is supposed to be for people 13 years and older. They have that in their policy. I remember seeing that when I signed the contract and I was like, how are they gonna enforce that? <laughs> Clearly, that is, has not been enforced. Clearly, if you know anything about YouTube, YouTube is full of channels directly targeted at children. Some of them are a little questionable. Some of them are actually really amazing and produce like educational, awesome content for kids. I know because my children watch that content and they love it and I love it. Now, those channels in particular, which are directly aimed at kids, intentionally aimed at kids, they are going to get hit the very hardest by this, which I'll explain in a minute. What is really tricky is everyone who is kind of in that gray area. For example, I am a mom vlogger and all along my main target audience has been moms in approximately my same demographic. And from what I have seen in my analytics, that has been mostly the case. But 
it's vague because, for example, I put family vlogs out there with my children in them. It is likely that there are some of the mothers that I watch who let their kids watch some of our vlogs. So there are kids under age 13 watching our videos. So when I put out a family vlog, I mean, even though it's not aimed directly at children, my overall audience is intended to be moms, somewhere between like ages 18 and 40. It could be interpreted by the FTC to attract kids. And that's where it's particularly insidious, guys. So part of their policy now is laid out like blatantly if you are directly intentionally making children's content then you have to mark it as such and then we get into this gray matter like i said what do you check like is this intended for kids well mostly it's intended for the parents so do i check it as for adults but then again kids are watching so do i check it for as kids but it's not just for kids. What if it's for like all ages? Um, there are other kinds of YouTube content creators that I'm not as much a part of that world, but I'm aware of them. Um, you know, like the people who build the amazing, amazing Lego sets, you know, they might have a whole span of ages of people watching them. Of course, little kids are gonna be watching them because they're building incredible Lego sets. Um, like life-size things and stuff. I know there's the whole video gaming community on YouTube, which my husband would know more about than me. <laughs> I know that they are also going to be hit pretty hard because, you know, there's a lot of games that are like right in that teen tween. Who is their demographic? What if they are intentionally making it for a 15-year-old, but a bunch of, thir you know, 12, 13-year-olds are watching it? You know, there's this really vague gray area. There are so many layers of this. I, I don't even know how I'm going to get to all of it, but I will try. If you label a video as for children, YouTube is now basically going to bury that video so nobody can find it because they are covering their you-know-whats from being sued for having personalized ads directed at children under the age of 13. So if you s directly say this is for kids under the age of 13, they are just basically not going to put personalized ads on them anymore and they are not going to put your video in the algorithm anymore. So that means that for somebody who is putting a video out there that is for kids, you're basically SOL. Pardon my French. Basically what they do, if you check that box, is for that video, or if your entire channel is that, it means that you can't have comments on that video, you can't hit the notification bell. They basically don't put you in the algorithm, so you can't show up in suggested videos. So nobody can discover the video. There's this whole other list of, I can't even remember what they all were, but all of these things that are just like, absolutely detrimental to a content creator. Like, if you are trying to be a YouTuber, those are all of the things that help you get discovered and help you to grow your channel. And they are basically just like cutting off all of those things. So then, the flip side of that is, let's just mark the entire channel as made for adults, then we don't have to worry about it, right? Because we're, we're just saying this is targeted as adults. You know, okay, so a channel like mine, there might be a whole range of ages watching, including some kids under 13 sometimes. So say I check the box for my entire channel to be for adults only. Now, the problem with that is you're not off the hook then because the FTC is literally like employing people to, and they're setting up algorithms and bots <laughs> to sweep YouTube and scour YouTube and find any sort of video that might actually be attractive to kids, even if you checked it was for adults. I know this is confusing, but like, it's so insidious. So say I check that box and I, in full faith, really think like, okay, this is mostly geared towards adults. That's, that is my intention with putting out this video. 
but let's say the algorithm comes along and something about my tags in the video or the description or something pings it and they say, oh, there's a keyword in here. What if I mention the word animation or I mention the word cartoon or I say one of their silly little keywords that is considered to attract children? This is not only uh, am I intentionally trying to make a video for children? This is like, is anything in the content of my video, could it even potentially attract children at all? That could be anything. That could be anything. So if they come along, or if a person that's doing the sweep, or if the algorithm or whatever, thinks that you have checked the box incorrectly, you can be fined by the FTC up to $42,000 per video. I wish I was kidding. I really wish I was kidding. Um, yeah. I kind of feel like YouTube is turning into this strange Orwellian like, I'm not even like a conspiracy theorist kind of person. This isn't even a conspiracy, but it feels Orwellian. They are taking complete control and basically saying, we can fine you or delete you at our discretion for any reason we decide. That could be anything. So, I kind of feel like me as a very small YouTuber, I am like many others, most certainly not alone in this as a content creator. I kind of feel like I am being forced to leave YouTube because it's not worth the risk for me. I cannot, for the sake of my family, risk some YouTube algorithm deciding that my video was marked wrong and them finding me you know, potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on how many videos they decide are not compliant. That's, that's where we're at. You've probably seen some of my live videos in the last year or so and I kind of feel like my enthusiasm for YouTube has been kind of dying a slow death <laughs> over the last year or two. I'm honestly feeling pretty disillusioned by YouTube. I always have kind of felt pretty unsupported as a creator by YouTube all along. They have never ever ever given customer service or technical support to any creator that is like, you know, smaller than 100,000 up to a million subscribers. Like any creator that's smaller than that, it is, I can't even remember what the threshold is for getting some sort of contact at YouTube. You're just SOL. Again, it's always been that way the entire time I've been on YouTube. When I started, I remember feeling that way. They would, you know, pull these stunts and there'd be no technical support whatsoever. I would just have to like Google things, see what other people had done, try all these things, spend a ton of time trying to figure it out until I could figure it out. And I usually managed over the last five years, because I have now been on YouTube for five and a half, five and a half, five and a half years. I've managed to overcome those obstacles all the way along. And it just seems like these antics they keep pulling, they have just been upping the ante each time. The one that really got me questioning if I wanted to keep doing YouTube was, it's been almost a year now, I can't remember. I think it's been like nine months. I can't remember exactly when it happened, but they disabled my comments and that was a whole other kettle of fish. <laughs> that once again, they were claiming that they were protecting 
kids by disabling comments, basically on most channels that had any relation to kids at all in any way, shape, or form. No rhyme or reason to it. It's like if it pinged any of the keywords, like, no more comments for you. And so I haven't had comments on my channel at all. They have removed all of my comments. And that honestly really took the wind out of my sails at that point because I, one of the main reasons I started YouTube was the community. And up until that point, I loved the YouTube community. I, I truly loved it. You know, I've met so many of you guys, I mean, met, <laughs> gotten to know. I'm actually, you know, personal friends with a number of you now, like on Facebook, you know, just with some other fellow YouTubers. I've made some like international friends, like some amazing things have come from being on YouTube. I have made videos about so much of the ups and downs of our lives and found so much community around that and felt so much support and felt like I could really support other people who were going through similar things. You know, that's what YouTube originally was about, is like, you tube. And basically there's nothing you about it anymore. I mean, that was really the whole point of YouTube when it started, was broadcast yourself. That was, their tagline back when they started. I guess they started in 2005. And I remember when YouTube started, I was like at the end of college in 2005. And I remember thinking at the time, like, oh, well, that's kind of weird. Like, why would you put yourself on the internet? <laughs> Here I am. I remember watching a bunch of mommy vloggers when I was first a young mom. Like when I first had Alex back in 2013, I watched a number of mom vloggers and I, I watched YouTube for just learning how to do a lot of momming kinds of things and I learned so much and it was awesome and it was because I watched that stuff so much that I was like I really think this is something I want to do because I feel like I have some things that I want to share with the world and I even kind of felt like it was something God was nudging me to do and I think it was at the time. I really think that YouTube has been a God thing for me. I never knew when I started five and a half years ago just how long it would last. I remember recording my first video which was my very first pregnancy update with Sophie, my second child. That was the reason that ultimately pushed me to decide to start my channel was my second pregnancy with Sophie. Remember sitting down for that first video and feeling really awkward. I was sitting in front of this very camera that I'm sitting in front of now and filming my first pregnancy update. And I remember feeling so awkward, like I'm talking to a camera, it's weird. And like here I am five and a half years later and it feels totally normal to me. But I remember thinking as I was filming that video, I was like, I, you know, I, I have the sense that this is like the start of something. I knew once I started, it was like jumping in with both feet. It's like I am either going to do what it takes to learn how to work on this platform or just not do it. It felt kind of like this all or nothing kind of thing and I was I was motivated to really do it and I did and I learned so much. I learned how to film a video, like a good decent video. I learned how to use editing software. Like I just, I didn't know any of that before I started YouTube. And like I learned basic cinematography stuff. Like I got equipment that I'm using right now. I had already had my SLR camera, but I got like my vlogging camera. I got my ring light <laughs> that I am using right now. I got the microphone that's on my camera. All this stuff that is like really helped me grow. It's almost been like a little side career for me, <laughs> you know, learning the art of making videos. Not just that, but the whole business side of it. I'm a small channel and I have never made that much off YouTube, but it has been a nice little 
you know, side source of income for us, you know, paying for kids activities and just for this content on this channel itself, just the equipment and upkeep and, you know, all the things that go into it behind it. I've learned all about algorithms, internet searches, and how to make things searchable. I have learned about branding your content, how to make thumbnails, how to make a catchy title, all the things that go into making YouTube videos. I've met some incredible people. As you know, I met Judy and Benji Travis and our kids went to preschool together. I don't know if they even realize how much they helped me, like especially with like video influencers and just Judy being like a fellow mom, even though she's like way bigger YouTuber than I ever was. But they've definitely been like mentors almost to me, even if they don't know that I feel that way. I have felt that way. I've learned so much about this whole world from them, which has been amazing. So it's been an incredible journey and I don't regret any of it. You know that saying, you know, some friends are in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. I'm sure you've heard that cliche thing. I think it's true though. And I almost feel like YouTube has been a friend. <sighs> like you guys have all been friends and I have really enjoyed investing into your lives. And I know you guys have invested into mine and building like actual friendships with some of you. And that's been totally invaluable for me. Like I have learned so much from you guys and I just wanted to thank you all. You, the YouTube community, are the main reason that I have stuck with YouTube for five and a half years. But I really am starting to feel like YouTube was a friend for a season and that season is coming to a close. Not for a reason that I would have personally chosen, but it is what it is. Interestingly enough, little side story. My external hard drive that has every YouTube video that I have ever made and I have made, this video will be 478 videos that I've made. My hard drive that had every single video crashed a couple weeks ago. I haven't been able to, with recovery software, recover it. There is a small chance that I could pay thousands of dollars for a highly specialized person to recover the data but I'm not sure if it's worth the investment for me. <laughs> so because that happened, thankfully YouTube has a feature that you can, you know, download your own videos back onto your computer. So I started doing that. I started and I'm still, because I have five and a half years worth of videos, 478 videos that I have to individually one by one download off of YouTube back onto my new hard drive. And so it's interesting, like it almost, that almost feels like a God thing too. Like, well, why did that happen? Here I am, like I had started backing up my YouTube videos before I even found out this whole thing exploded. So it almost feels like it's strangely a God thing, like confirming, you know, this is the end of this little season in your life and it's gonna be okay. And so that begs the question, what's next? What am I gonna do next? Now that I have invested so much of my time and love and energy into ultimately being in community with people and helping people, like I don't want to give that up completely. And I am looking into what other platforms that I can use. And I'm sure that there are other content creators trying to figure out the same thing. Is there a YouTube alternative? And that's the thing with YouTube is it's such a monopoly on this little space of internet video that there really hasn't been a like real good competitor to YouTube all this time. My prediction is that is about to change with these changes that are happening. So I am feeling that out right now. What I am kind of leaning towards doing is a new Vimeo account. I will have that link below. I'm still gonna be Eat, Pray, Crunch over there. I don't believe that you have to have an account to look at videos. It's definitely not a platform that you can make much of a living because they don't have ads on it right now. And the ads is the whole reason YouTube is in trouble, right? So they don't have ads, which is nice. I think they also have like a tip jar, which I'm not quite sure how I feel about it yet, but maybe I'll, I'll, I'll enable that or, or something, I'm not sure. But I think I'm just gonna use that for my family vlogs. I have read that Vimeo is more of a community that is made for people who 
care about the quality of their videos and care a little more about cinematography and people who are way, way better at it than me, <laughs> but also just some, you know, average Janes like me too. And, you know, I have been trying to get a little more artistic with my vlogs lately and, you know, my vlogs have never been that popular on YouTube, which is fine. Like, I have always said that those are just for the sake of my family's memories, but maybe over on that platform, a group of people who really cares about about the quality of videos will like them more, who knows. But ultimately, I, I wanna continue making vlogs for the sake of our family. I adore having those memories of our family, and I wanna continue capturing those memories because they're gonna be so invaluable in the future, looking back on. And even in future generations, I think that would be interesting for future generations to look back on because my vlogs are almost like my diary, so that's really important to me to keep going with that. So I think I'm going to put those over there. And then I'm also, I think, going to expand my Eat, Pray, Crunch Facebook page more. All I've really used that for is just for sharing memes and just for sharing my YouTube videos on there. I haven't really used it for a whole lot else. I'm thinking of expanding that more because Facebook does have video capability and I am thinking of putting more like inspirational type videos and maybe more how-to type videos on there and maybe just posting more posts because as a homeschooling mom with three kids like I don't have as much time as I did when I first started YouTube. I just don't have the time that I used to have and so it was honestly getting kind of hard for me to keep up YouTube the way I wanted to anyway. Um, so I think a lot of that stuff can just be posted as posts rather than videos. Um, but I could also put upload videos onto there and I can do live. I could go live on Facebook. I know that there's already an audience there. I know a bunch of you guys, you've already liked my Facebook page. So I encourage you if you want to keep in touch with me and I would love to keep in touch with you, please do go over and like my Facebook page. I will have the link to that in the description box because I really would love to keep in touch with you guys. And just kind of continue that community because at least in this point in time, Facebook has not disabled comments <laughs> because Facebook is all about community, right? That is their whole point. <laughs> social media, it's social. <laughs> so I think I will be doing just a lot more of that kind of thing on Facebook. I do have an Instagram for my Eat, Pray, Crunch, um, but I'm just honestly not on there very much. Like I said, I have very limited time with the responsibilities that I have and I only have time for so many social media. And the one that I gravitate towards is Facebook just because one, all, almost all my friends are there. And two, it has every type of social media all rolled into one. They have photos, video, you can share articles, you can write posts like Twitter. I feel like it's all of those capabilities all rolled into one, which is I think why I like Facebook most and I just started it first and I know it best. So I will probably be putting most of my new stuff on Facebook. So please, please, please go over to my Facebook page and like my Facebook page because I really don't want to lose the community with you guys. Even if I am breaking up with YouTube, I don't want to break up with you guys. <laughs> so please do go over there because I love you guys and I really want to keep that going with you guys and kind of pick up the broken pieces of YouTube and put them back together in a few other places. <laughs> yeah, so that's where I'm at. I don't think I'm going to fully delete my channel. I think I may just turn it all to private so that all of the videos that I've published and all of their metadata and everything that's on them will still be there. And who knows, like I never wanna say never. I mean, maybe with all of the huge uproar that this is causing, maybe, just maybe, the will listen to how upset people are and adjust it to be more actually reasonable, <laughs> but I'm not holding my breath for that. And honestly, I feel like I have been jaded enough by YouTube with all of the things that they have done now that I'm just kind of feeling over YouTube, even if they figure this thing out. I'm just kind of over it now. I just don't want to jump through all of their ridiculous hoops anymore. And it's clear they just don't care that much about their content creators. They care more about the advertisers. And that's just what it comes down to. 
for YouTube, the almighty dollar wins, as it often does with gigantic corporations. So it is what it is. In terms of content for what I'll be putting, you know, maybe more on my Facebook, I had been planning to introduce a couple of topics on YouTube that I'm not going to be doing now because of everything I just explained. I will give you guys a little teaser. I was diagnosed with inattentive ADHD and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome all within the last year and those are some major things that have been happening in understanding myself and my life and that was really something I was looking forward to talking about more on YouTube, but I think I'm just going to start talking about it on Facebook now so I can actually talk to you guys about it because I kept not doing it because I was waiting for my comments to come back, waiting for them to come back. And they never have, they never did. So I'm gonna just go put it on a platform that will allow me to have the community. <laughs> if that is something that piques your interest, definitely go over to my Facebook because I will be talking about those topics more along with all of the other stuff that I love to talk about. So he's making me like have this love-hate relationship with YouTube. I was so looking forward to making a video about this. How we are making some major like sustainability changes in our lifestyle. Now that our kids are getting a little older, I feel like I have a little more energy to put into that kind of thing now. And I've been just learning a lot of like easy lifestyle changes that everyone can make and I want to talk about that. So I'll talk about that on Facebook. I'll continue talking about food, parenting, autism, giftedness, organic gardening. We're done with pregnancy so I won't be doing any more pregnancy stuff. <laughs> My motto for Eat, Pray, Crunch has been moderately crunchy lifestyle and parenting. And I want to continue to deliver that kind of content to you guys elsewhere now, just because I have such a passion for it. And I really feel like I have found my village and my tribe. Let's continue that over on Facebook and Vimeo. I'll keep you guys updated over there too, because I don't want to just limit to say like, those are the only places I'm going to be now because I'm gonna just kind of like feel it out and see like, well, if there's this mass exodus from YouTube, where is everybody gonna be going? <laughs> you know, I will be keeping my eye on that as well. Um, and who knows what will develop in the next few years. Like there's probably gonna be some new up and coming platforms and I'll keep my eyes peeled for that and try and keep up with the times a little bit. So here I am extending this video as long as I can because I don't want it to end. Like, I'm like, honestly, like, I've been grieving you guys. I'm honestly feeling emotional right now because I kind of feel like this is the end of an era. Like I said, never say never. I may come back if conditions are different in the future, um, but for now I'm gonna say goodbye. So an enormous thank you to all of you who have been so supportive of my channel and have allowed me to be part of your lives as well. I can't tell you how much of a blessing it has been in my life and I thank you. So I will post this in my community tab. I will leave my videos up until the end of the year. And then I'm going to turn my channel to private starting December 31st, because January 1st is when they are enacting this legislation and starting the sweep and everything. So I will post this on the community tab. Please do leave a comment there so that I can, you know, say goodbyes to you guys and interact with you one last time on YouTube. Um, and hopefully I will see you over on Vimeo and Facebook for now. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you elsewhere. Bye.